I invite you to stand as you are able to do so in honor of the reading of the gospel lesson. Today's gospel lesson is found in John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Please pray with me now. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I know I say that pretty often, uh, but it, it this verse, uh, these verses actually, house within it an amazing question or request. It's more of a request, but an amazing little phrase that is so significant for us to hear time and time again. As a matter of fact, it's such a significant phrase that several churches I know have these words engraved or posted on the inside of pulpits, of a preacher's pulpit, where only the preacher can see them. The words that are engraved are this, preacher, we wish to see Jesus. What a powerful reminder. We wish to see Jesus. So in this text this morning, uh, we start off and we hear that they are those following Jesus, Jesus and his disciples and, and others are among those who goes up, go up to worship, said who went up to worship, as the scripture says, at the festival. And among those were some Greeks. There's lots of discussion about who these Greeks may have been. Nonetheless, they come to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they say to him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Of course, Philip, who is in the inner circle. Philip went and told Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip go together to tell Jesus. We wish to see Jesus, they ask. We want to meet him. We want to talk with him directly. Well, Jesus answers them in a teaching, which is not an unusual an unusual event for Jesus to, to cut to the chase very quickly of a situation. 
And so we hear not um, a conversation between Jesus and these Greeks, but instead Jesus, who talks about what is happening next. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, he says. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And he goes on to talk about his own death, to prophesy. Interesting. And the Greeks, those who came to Philip and Andrew, they just wanted to see Jesus. This also, this text here, gives us a bit of a, a good timeline, and it helps us to set the context for what was happening here in this scripture, the festival of the Passover. When we hear those words, we should understand that that means the time is near for Jesus to die. When we hear that, the Passover, we know that that's within that last time frame. It's the last time frame that, that Jesus will be living, and that leads up to the garden, right, and, and to the Last Supper. So it helps us understand what's going on and when it's happening. It's interesting, isn't it, uh, so often uh, in these stories of Jesus and even in our own lives, really, the simple turns to the profound. The simple turns to the profound. We hear a simple question. We want to see Jesus. It's not very complicated, is it? We want to see Jesus. <laughs> How many times do we say those kinds of things in a day? I wish to see whoever it is that I've gone to see. Um, it's, it's not really a profound question, yet it turns into something really quite amazing. We wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. Jesus hears the request. Jesus hears the request and moves into a powerful sermon and actually in such an amazing way shows them Jesus. He complies just in a way that they weren't expecting. In the, the sermon that he preaches and those words that follow the question or the request to see Jesus, there is a continued promise of connection with Jesus. There's a, the, the beautiful story that he goes through that talks about um, what will happen. And then he says, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Not only, not only do we get to see Jesus, sir, I wish to see Jesus, but we have assurance in this text that we will continue to experience Jesus, that I, we will continue to see Jesus over and over and over again, that it's not done. Those who follow me will see me. Where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Such words of encouragement and hope and help. We wish to see Jesus. We do, don't we? We are just like the Greeks. We come to church. We come to worship together. And these days, it's been in our hearts. Soon it will be in person again. 
and we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus in our dealings with one another. We need to see Jesus in one another, in the way we treat each other. So let me challenge you, I challenge myself with this idea. Oh. So, before you send that email or post that post online or send an angry response or blurt out an angry response to another, remind yourself, we need to see Jesus. Just like the pulpit and the engraving on the pulpit Remind yourself, we need to see Jesus in one another. Doesn't mean we can't be direct. That doesn't mean we can't lovingly share what we need to share. But as we do it, we need to see Jesus. Before you speak the words that would be so painful if the person you were speaking about was present, otherwise known as gossip. <laughs> Say that little phrase to yourself. We need to see Jesus. Before you make that phone call, before you say those words that simply can't be taken back, remind yourself, we need to see Jesus in one another. It's something this world desperately needs. In our sacrificial giving, we need to see Jesus. In the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness just can't overcome it, we need to see Jesus. In reaching out to those who others shun, we need to see Jesus. In the renewal of our faith, both yours and mine, with resurrection power, we need to see Jesus. In the way others are treated, in the way we treat one another. Oh, dear friends, it's so significant that we hear those words today. And it brings to us such a beautiful challenge. May we remind ourselves over and over again the words that were asked as I share with you again that scripture. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks or were some people from Bexley or from Columbus or from Westerville or Whitehall, Gehanna. <laughs> they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and they said to him, Sir, we would see Jesus. Friends, we wish to see 
Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let's affirm our faith together as we share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then also, I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer as you hear these words of benediction. O oh Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, friends, and have a wonderful week. We will see you next week for worship. <laughs>